All right, here we go into map number one. It's Mind Freak and Arusta for the op open, closed qualifier, even of ESL Challenger. The opener oh, wow. of the closed qualifier. That's right. Mind Freak did come from the open qualifier, though. Uh, so there is that. But we'll see how things go here in the closed qualifier. I believe last time they played against each other, Mind Freak did get a little bit dismantled by Arusta. 13 4, 13 1. But. Bit of a different time that was, even though it was only a month ago. So we'll see how things go today. Oh, and Ricky going to be hiding on the corner there. Great attention drawn from the players on site. And this is getting extremely difficult for Rooster now. TJ and Slimy have retrieved the package and are looking just to stay this one or play this one as close as possible. Retaking through bedroom and looking to just poke their head somewhere else with a minute on the clock. Yeah, fair enough. Round's definitely not over. TJP has a P250 in hand. A couple of flashbangs available for him as well. Gump's going to be like this. setting himself up over toward the B-bomb site, ready to go. Should the push come in that direction, and Mind Freak on the push out from the A site as well, gathering a bit of info courtesy of Texter on short. Oh, awkward. Gump now going to get stuck behind the big box. Swinging, going to be able to lock it in on the B site. And Mind Freak take the first pistol of the series. Yeah, they do it quite easily as well, it has to be said. You know, quite a comfortable little round. Yeah. Love to see it. If you're a Mind Freak fan. Rooster, on the other hand, no bomb plant. But we are going to see the hero scout out of Chell. See if he can... Punch some holes in through mid-doors. Ooh! Mm. <laughs> Gonna be doing just that, Gump. Not allowed to play on B. No, so it'll be just Ricky for the moment. Though, you do have Texa kind of floating his way across. He does not have any util to help Ricky out. Good headshot or two here from Rooster would make a big difference in this entry on B. Ricky going for a bit of a risk, but Chell will punish it. That's two absolute bangers from the scout. Now it's on to Texa. He's deal with a couple quite nicely but another from Chell as he catches oh Texter and that is the bomb plant for Rooster so three on two post plant on that B bomb site Tux and Payne with no util to get their way back into B surely aren't in for this so Payne oh he thought about it for a second instantly traded Tux in there for one as well and does save the day Chell not able to do enough with that scout hey that's two a win zero. anyway that is a win anyway Four rifles taken away. Tux is going to be able to upgrade to an M4 somewhere. But that was like, what, two M4s lost in the meanwhile. Whole bunch of util, whole bunch of economy swinging back towards Rooster. Because they got that bomb plant as well. And look at how much money they have. Just off the back of a glass cannon scout force. Yeah, crazy. Got a pause. Uh, there's obviously some issues... Getting this game underway, so maybe there's still some doubts, some little problems here and there. Hopefully that's not uh, going to be a recurring thing for this evening. But I think at this point, Rooster really need to kind of lock in. Uh, we've sort of had the conversation a little bit about how things have been going for them in Challenger League. It's been a little bit up and down. And, you know, we would expect that to be the case when they lose their star player in Netic. They've also made a change in the leadership of the roster with TJP, as I understand now, being the in-game leader. Um, and that's going to take some, like, getting used to both of those little change-ups. But the way that the results have sort of played out for Rooster, I don't think have really been up to scratch in Challenger League. Yeah. And now you have a really quite... Amazing opportunity with this qualifier here for Atlanta, given that FlyQuest have got the auto invite. You don't have to worry about FlyQuest. Like, this would be the kind of qualifier where we would be watching it right now, Mac. And we'd be going, well, this game really doesn't matter because in the upper bracket, you have to play against FlyQuest. But that's not the case right now. So here's where Rooster, they've had their little, you know, month of dilly-dallying around in Challenger League, but you've got to lock in for this qual in particular because letting this one slip would be a, a real debacle. Yeah, they've lost a lot of firepower losing Netic. I've heard, you know, things aren't going anywhere near as well. But then the same thing can be said. Look, you, you've lost Attic, you've lost Hazza over on the sides of uh, Houseos. Yep. AKA Bad News Kangaroos. So it's just about who's going to be able to find that structure faster. 
especially with a couple of new patches that have been released. So, new round. Roost up. First gun round. Chell even going to be able to salvage an AWP thanks to TJP. And with the util they've got left, there's plenty just to execute onto B, which is, as we know, one of the most unretakable sites in all of Counter-Strike. And it's just Gumpy to hold. Yeah. Apparently not for Tux with a Famous, though. So... Yep. 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 They, they mostly add Glocks. It's true. Well, Chill yep. had... Uh, a scout. Anyway. <laughs> just saying, that's not a Glock. Like, in case you didn't know. <laughs> Smoke's going down. It's pretty good timing there from Gum. Mm. Rooster, we're starting to think about making a bit of a move. He's got the HE nade here as well. But there's still no movement from Mind Freak mm. at all. So they're putting a lot of faith in Gump with the ability to at least maybe get one here oh, and, and then survive. Where's he going? He's going over to gate. Just before that smoke fades. Is this move going to save the round for them? Will they even find him? Depends on where the flashes go. Away and oh, swinging straight off the back of it, only able to find one, which may be enough breathing room for a retake here. Bad doors smoke that's going to be open. They have to try and cross together. What util they got? They got nothing, just the HE, just looking to fight this together. Chell hits his shot, and the bomb is going to be able to cross successfully. But <laughs> there's a lot of damage taken from Rooster now. You can see as well, text up slowly but surely going for that flank in the upper side of things. I think he's been heard. Nice little post plant setup from Rooster. Yeah, the text but... is able to find this first pick, Jordan. To go wrong with. Well, that hasn't gone the way of Texter. In fact, it's ASAP and Danger to find. So, Ricky, best case scenario, get some damage on the way out, but ASAP looking sharp in that round. We'll convert the first one for Rooster. And uh, unfortunately, the House of Cards has come crashing down for Mind Freak. Yeah, what, what happened there? I think one of those smokes just didn't hit i think it maybe hit the roof and went in the upper because it was supposed to be a, a door smoke that someone was lining up maybe they just decided to bust through anyway by the way it's all in the past now and shell is looking to hopefully spot someone there in front of the smoke won't be able to do so long control protocols are going to be established for both teams but mind freak already in front of the prog smoke Flash to mid. Roostar hunting for more control over to this direction. Ricky in a solid position with that P250 on short. Mm. And he hears a, a decent amount of information. With that mid push starting to come through. Yeah, Mind Freak thinking about maybe doing something there as well. You can tell Ricky wants to have a crack. Mm. I think they will activate after that utils thrown tj heads up there gets banged in the head but the ak higher caliber a bit more damage True. asap having a sniff out towards b ramp and looking to set up for the b split fix is having a bit of a look now as well so pop flash around the corner set him up nicely he's going to take Ooh. the head off of asap nice little one two punch from texter and gump but gonna get a little more to save this round especially now with gump on the fire mp9 though doesn't even need to come into play. Texas found an AK and he's going to be able to make good use of that one. This is the B site being held quite nicely by Mind Freak, and it seems there's going to be a, another twist and another turn in the early stages of oh. Dust 2. Bomb now. Smoked off. 20 seconds. They pretty much have to commit to B here through that smoke if they want to go for the round. And I'm looking at at least two members holding that tight choke out of upper dark so you will see rooster just commit to the save you could see what they were going for nice little counter play at b ramp that round pretty much hinges on that pick coming through from text up shout out to the flash from gump allowing him to get that free pick mm. and from there things just went south real quick yeah spanner in the works for rooster no doubt they thought they were Ready to get their first half started, but it's going to take a little bit more work now. Back into another gun round, but it's a bit... It's a bit wonky from Rooster. Dangerous down on the Deagle. Got a couple of Galils here and there. Chell's looking for an opportunity, and he might just get one. What is going on here? Texas charged up mid. Will actually end up losing his life against ASAP. Chell missed the shot. But it doesn't matter. Rooster get their man.
and they're happy just to sit back. If one person's running up mid, surely there's another, right? Pain. Just looking to sit a little bit further back on short. If he falls, then that A site is very much cracked open. So you can see him just giving a little bit more map control. Tux deciding to turtle up over towards B instead of playing for the B ramp. And Mind Freak, if they do just commit to taking this long control, can posture themselves for an A site retake if they are able to pick someone off over towards Elbow. Danger's looking Bomb. for it with the Deagle. Mm. He's the forward scout. Point man for TJP. Definitely looking they're, like it'll end up being a beast split. They're very much expecting some CT aggression somewhere in the form of Ricky maybe pushing bedroom, but we know that's not happening. And even though they faked this beast split, you've still got Tux with info over towards window, flash from Gump. They've heard that one come from close towards tunnels, so they know where one of these CTs are playing. Tux should be able to pivot and swing off of Gump's contact from this position. Let's see how the CT hold goes. MP9 gets the job done, and Tux playing around the double stack. Going to be able to get yet another. Bringing it back to the 3v3 in this four seconds of the plant now. Rooster have left this way too late. There's the pick, but the bomb, oh, will just get planted in time. Just made it. Ricky gets the... Oh, no, they what? didn't get the bomb down. Uh, they did not get it down uh, in time. I think we're having that little, little uh, yeah. half-second delay on the UI bug because... There was definitely four for us when that bomb plant started. Maybe that is why we've got a little bit of controversy. But again, a little pause to uh, try to fix whatever's going on. Maybe Rooster had a technical issue. Maybe that's why it took them so long to commit to the B hit there. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there was uh, something going on. Yeah. It seemed like, as well, Slimy, like, he just didn't get the memo that the guy at car died. He was still looking in the wrong direction when Tux went for the reswing, so... Yeah. Maybe there was like some lag in the TS or whatever. I don't know. But he basically just got shot in the back a good like second after Gump had died. Yeah. By the way, whatever happened, happened. And it's four to one right now. Rooster unable to find themselves that second. And Mind Freak, great team play to not only clear out B ramp, get the info that there's no one coming from that position, allowing Tux to play off of Gump's contact. And that's just how you play great fundamentals on the CT side, Jordan. So now you know when, when know. we're playing some competitive, I'm going to say, yo, you do that thing that Gump did and I'm going to do that thing that Tux did. No, I'll you bait know what? You. I'm never well, playing you, CS how about again you bait because me? They, yeah. they killed jump binds. What am I, how am I going to throw the smokes now, man? We just have to find alternatives for the moment. I have a feeling that they will allow us to get... I, I have a feeling that they will bend the knee and put in at least a jump bind, like, jump single throw, button. I mean, yeah. Jump throw, single button. Mm -hmm. um, I think that might be the only thing. I don't think we're going to get W jump throws back. I think that's just going to be a skill-based thing where you got to really, you know, time your little W on the, on the jump throw connection and hope for the best. Either way, we're live again, and Rooster are all in pretty much in this round. TJ. Clear lowers, but this angle favoring Kane, and oh, he's going to bring the pain train for at least two good nade onto Slimy, chips him down to 83, but at this range, at Tech 9, not going to work as intended, and with the man advantage, Mind Freak, just give some map control. Yep. Happy with that. Cool. We've got an AWP and an AK here for Rooster, so there's enough to sort of wrangle something. Danger came into the round with the AWP, tried to see if there was a pick open on long, but no chance of that. And Mind Freak going to retake that space. Pop flash around the corner there for Tux. He's cleared out pit. He's cleared out bedroom. Or as much of bedroom as he can. He'll set himself up on the corner. And now Ricky can focus things a little bit more towards short rather than towards long. Relying on Tux. Who oh, might have just got his timing wrong with that little bit of a wiggle backwards. But he's still alive and that's what matters. And up onto short himself so that's nice because well there's a pick on to slimy we'll take that one thank you very much two on four for danger and chell were the two players that had the weapons in hand but they're finding it quite oh. to get up on the site oh. tux will fall but you've still got a bunch of mind freak members to try to find and oh, so hello. far so good for rooster i pick a piece and all of a sudden the round is on bomb 10 seconds still is across they saw it long when ricky going through the flash is gonna be able to lock it in 
great flash again coming through from Gump to allow that one to happen. Danger, unable to hold, unable to trade it. And that's going to come down to Rooster again, just maybe leaving it too little too late. Yeah, there's a lot of streaky rounds at the moment, but they're all going the way of Mind Freak. I'm, I'm kind of getting like the feeling that at some point there'll be a straw that breaks the camel's back, but that straw has not been put down by Rooster yet. Mm. And I suppose the longer this goes on for, the more opportunities Mind Freak have to actually kind of like lock in one or two of these rounds, build up that CT economy, and, and actually start to run away with things. You can still see though that their money is really, really poor, and that's why Rooster are again incentivized to force into this round a little bit. Got an AK in the hands of Slimy, a bunch of util, they're gonna give B a crack. Mm. Again. But Gump Gumpy. has been solid. Going for the old doors smoke, which usually doesn't go as deep as what everyone has been hoping for. Good, cheeky lineup. I want to see where it lands. Either way, Gump playing an extremely dangerous game in between both those smokes. We'll have to cover to four back to safety. Ricky hoping he can find one here from the back of side. Going to be able to pull out the secondary and still get some damage done. Four HP between him and the grave, and Gump will come in with the flash from Ricky to mop things Lovely. up. Great hold on the B site from Mind Freak. Yeah, everything went well for Mind Freak, didn't it? You know, a little bit of chip damage from Gump as he exits through the smoke. Then Ricky gets one or two. He's able to come straight away to Gump that one at least has gotten past. Gump's ready for that guy. Then Ricky ducks his head down, gets that flash forward. Gump for the reswing. Everything working perfectly for Mind Freak. Good coordination as well from the two B players. And that's finally a round for Mind Freak where they'll feel like, okay, we've actually solidified ourselves a little bit. Um, five guns alive, built some money up. Yeah, the money's not fantastic still, but... It's better than these kind of wishy-washy, like, down to one player alive kind of rounds they're having. And again, they're going to try for a bit of aggression in towards mid, and oh. it's kind of worked out this time. Texter will catch ASAP, who was looking to find a little bit of aggression himself, and, well, he got it, but not the way that he would have liked it to have, and 6-1 and one for Rooster is starting to look like it might be 7-1. and one. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That timing almost works perfectly for Big Chell. And Ricky looking to catch anyone jumping up towards Cat there. Ooh, dangerous yeah. game. Falling back to a 2-3 split. Mind Freak playing for long and B. So short, open for the taking. And it will be the first time we've seen Rooster go this route. Yeah, Payne's ready and waiting. He hasn't had much to do in this game. Obviously... Warping for Mind Freak, CT side of Dust 2, he wanted to be having a big one. Here's his opportunity. A couple of flashes, lay it over the top. We force him off the initial line, oh. and that first one doesn't quite connect, nor the second. Just trying to shake some of that rust out, maybe. Oh, uh, There we go. Third time's the charm. Not going to make the same mistake three times in a row. The bomb plant is going to go down for Rooster, but they're at a significant numbers deficit, and this is going to be a very fast retake for Mind Freak. They are not letting Rooster get set at all. One for one, Slimy, it's not going to be enough. Someone's going to have to step up in a big way, and it will have to be TJ, but there's just no world. And that is seven for Mind Freak. Yeah, and, solid retake uh, there. Money's building up nicely now. I feel like, I think there was a smoke on the, the corner of the A site. The intention of that is to provide a bit of cover when you are coming up elbow, but I think it might have bloomed either too late, and that's why you saw Danger get picked for free, looking like a, a bit of a silly boy trying to clear out Goose. But that comes down to, you know, time into the utility. They could have laid some more flashes across long. Decided to just go for the double off the line, you know. <sighs> it's, a, it's a rough one to, to figure out. But Mind Freak, get the better of him this time. And Rooster, again, going to be going for a force in. Plenty of flashes, plenty of smokes. And not going for the initial take it long. Big chunk damage on a TJP. Misery666 is screaming. That HE timing looks good, but off the back of one flash, Payne was solo. Didn't want to give away the AWP for free, so he's going to go all the way back to CT. Playing a slightly wide line to try and catch anyone creeping on the corner. Yeah, backing himself. In fact, he's going to be able to cross the car. Ooh, if one flash, Jordan, then he's done. Well, he's got the backup of Tex there, at least, who might be able to trade. But now he's set up a little bit nicer. 
And in fact, he's going to continue to aggress. This is starting to get bold. There's no flash to set him up here. It's really just a case of oh. timing. Turns away for a second, but finds his mark. And he'll need to do more than that because ASAP was close. I don't think Payne had a chance for a second shot there, but at least it's info. Tets up. We'll spot that player shouldering around the corner, but no harm, no foul. Rooster maintain the four on four. Mm. I love the patience from Rooster there. ASAP waiting for him to flash that whole time for that one moment. Tuck's going to be able to deal with the split up short. And now there's only one prong and 30 seconds for Rooster to try and make their way back. Smoke on the cross is going to leave a little gap. A couple of flashes across the top. Ricky, great movement to try and dodge it. Spots that push up A ramp. Will get stuck over towards Wizard here. And hope that his short players can maybe do a little bit of extra damage. Molly on the site is going to delay the plant for even longer. Slimy now planting for Platt with Danger having long control. Yeah, well, let's see how Mindfreak go on this retake. It's a bit of a different ball game. Four on three. Timing maybe not as easy for Mindfreak, but they're hitting their shots anyway. And they don't need the util. You normally think util's going to be a factor. Not the case this time around for Mindfreak. They get it done the old-fashioned way. That is eight to one now. And this is starting to look like a bit of a non-contest. Yeah. Well, I'm keen to see what Mind Freak have for us in the second half, even though we might not have to see too much of it if we keep up with uh, this solid CT side on D2. Then we'll see what Rooster have for us. But maybe the D2 pick catching them off. Maybe they're just not feeling it straight out of the gates. Need a little bit of a warm-up. It is early. It is way before gamer hours. We're right now, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, look, it's not exactly a map that's super up there in terms of the map pool for Rooster, but they do play it every now and then. Yeah. So I would have expected a little more than an 8-1. ASAP. Getting the info that the AWP is hanging around just outside the mid doors. But they're not aware of Ricky's positioning. The flash Ooh. might have caused a problem for him for a second there, but he still wins the duel. Will be traded. Again, not a terrible start to the round for Rooster, but as it goes on, you can see these incremental benefits for Mind Freak that are going in their direction. Good lot of chip damage onto TJP and Slimy off the back of that nade. Ooh. Contact out long? No. Flashing. So, Mind Freak going to be aware that Rooster have gone for the late long control. Halfway through the round. Flash on the corner. Just trying to blind any pit players on the line. No one there. But with the long control, now you're going to see Rooster regroup and actually swing back to B. I thought they'd maybe... Go for some short control and catch Tux doing this little old creep here. But if Tux can get over towards green box in time, he might hear this rotate at the backyard. No. Nah. Just pincering on the A long position. And in the meanwhile, it's going to be all on pain again to try and lock on B. It's a good spot to play from though with the AWP. Fish in a barrel. There's the first one. Pain. Oh, he knows. He knows his way around a fishing rod back. It was almost the uh, highlight that you wanted, wasn't it? But Slimy shuts it down. Still, doesn't matter. 9-1 to one is a very dominant display from Mind Freak. That orb was not recollected. Went for the AK instead. Mind Freak happy to pay the extra to grab the orb. Yeah. Look. Two rounds left. They got money. They, had like, they still got 8k on Tux there. So they're going to be right as rain to buy into the next which is the last round of the first half. And Rooster still looking for any real success here on D2. Things just constantly going wrong, getting timed out, getting outplayed, getting outshot, which is maybe not what you would expect from a lineup like Rooster. Good timing on that HE. Boom. ASAP getting bowled over. TJ getting tickled. And the short control is still here, but we'll see if Rooster can find an opening. Yeah, I mean, you say you wouldn't expect it, and I think that's a fair statement, but I'll say I'm hugely surprised after having seen some of those Challenger League results. It's, yeah, it's just not really coming together for Mind Freak, uh, for Rooster at the moment. Ooh, TJ. It certainly is for Mind Freak. Ricky close behind that smoke. He's aware that maybe there's something going on. Oh. He's actually snuck his way in. Smoke Criminal and Pain and Texture have found one apiece, which makes the job even easier for Ricky. He doesn't oh, need to more. push the pace. He can play patiently and wait for two, which he didn't quite manage to get, but Good enough. Texter will fall to danger. But danger now having to negotiate a one on three is a tough ask. Oh, bomb down in the rough position. 40 seconds. Let's see what danger can cook up. He has the one rotating the CT. Catches the timing. 
Gump in a good position to get info. Tux can probably play off of that contact. Gump's just going to play the offline of the window. Awkward situation indeed, and Gump's going to punish. 10 to 1, looking for 11 here for Mind Freak. They've got guns, they've got everything they need, money and more. And Rooster, they're going to have to force here. Galil's, Scouts maybe, maybe just some secondaries to try and get as much utility in the kit, in the buy as possible. That's a rough way to go on the first map of the series. Yeah, double all. Tanks are going to have his crack this time around. He's straight into unders as well. Chell down to 5 HP. Another rough start to the round for Rooster. They've lost a lot of map control. They've lost some HP. And one of their members. Flash over the top of mid. ASAP's Ooh. making a lot of noise. Ricky's going to be well aware that there's a push coming in this direction. And ASAP. Had too much to do, too many angles to check. Now Chell, low on HP, could go down there as well. Texter in the end. Actually got danger, but Chell remains untouched. For now. Oh. But not for very long. That upper's control. Just crucial to get that late trade. Beautiful timings on everything Mind Freak have been doing so far for the uh, second half of the half. Second quarter, even. And, oh! You saw that collateral. Didn't connect this time. And in the 2v4, now back to the 2v3, Rooster are looking for the second. But a site provided minimal success for Rooster. And again, it mm. looks like Slimy is going to be able to sneak his way up short. Double flash to play with. No extra util picked up from the other four that have all fallen in the same position. We've also got Texter creeping up behind him on short. We'll see how the timing goes. Slimy will be able to make it safely to a plant behind short box. Texter looking for him. Ooh, can't hit the head. Yeah, just wants and to back off now. Play it, play patient. Yeah, does not want to give him that 1v1. Gump swinging wildly on long, and that'll be more than enough. What a half from Mind Freak. It's going to end up being 11 to 1. It was a bit touch and go at the start of the half, wasn't it? But mm. toward the end, it really felt like dominance from Mind Freak. We'll see if that's going to continue heading into the second half.
So jumping back into the second half, I don't know that there's going to be much of a second half the way things are going right now. Mind Freak up 11 to 1. And Rooster not really showing up to this match so far. Let's see what they can do if they can get this pistol. Get off to a good start on the CT side. Uh, I don't even then give them much of a chance, but it's got to start here with the pistol. Patience from Mind Freak, expecting mid aggression from Rooster. Just faking flash towards long. Looking like they have tried to spot some kind of tendencies. But Tuck's knowing that no one has made their way up mid, just jump peeking for a while. And Mind Freak contacting towards long later on. Tech start with that one smoke, which should be used to try and cross to A. But keeping the brakes pushed on for so long is actually going to allow Rooster to go for the full rotate away from A, sending TJ towards mid, sending Danger over towards B. But now with that smoke coming in, oh. see a rotation back. Nice shots. Chell gone. Yeah. Chell did not have a chance. But Tux has gone down for fairly cheaply, and now the re-aggression's going to come into mid. It leaves Gump in all sorts of trouble. He's going to just hit Taylor <laughs> as best as he can. Gets a oh. reload off, and he's got Danger as well. No way. He's wasting the time of these remaining Rooster members, and he's not going down either. Slimy drops. It's danger times for Rooster at this point. TJP's on one HP ASAP, the last alive now. Ricky has a P250 in hand, pops his head up for a second there. That might have been a little overzealous. What's going on? Why is he jumping? Kit. Why is he jumping? He just got the kit. 47. Hell, oh, nice don't worry shot about from it. Gump at range. The Glock shouldn't be able to do that, but it has. And Gump, big MVP that round. Big damage at mid and from plat to close. The 12 to 1, this is looking like a dire situation for Rooster. Jordan, if you told me it was going to be a 13 to 1 affair to kick off this series, I would have laughed. I would yes. have laughed at you. You would have thought I was playing silly buggers. Silly but I'm not. Billy. That round was a bit silly, Billy. It to was, be honest. Yeah, for sure. But Mind Freak got the dub. 12 1, they're up and. Yeah, let's just uh, get this one over and done with, I reckon, and go to Mirage because Rusa need a little bit of a new, new, new map, new me kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Rusa looking to hold some utility to try and block Mind Freak who are opting to take that early long control. Probably going to pincer it back and go for short later with Ricky's position here lurking over towards green box. Why is it called green box? Well, there's no green box here anymore, Jordan, but that's just what it's called. I believe in 1.6 or something, there was a green box there. Text up. Little pop flashes over the car side, trying to blind anyone on sight, but ooh, counterplay. Danger going to be able to make his way through for one. Text up, swinging. And the Mac 10 is looking to rumble all the way through sight. ASAP with the M4. Going to be trying to play from Ninja, no. but unfortunately won't be able to get any damage done. Tech to take the touchdown in the meanwhile. And Rooster okay. hit back to find their second. Yeah, I, I mean, that'll do it. No bomb plan either for Mind Freak. So we go again. Bit of chaos. Bit They're going to force by. Tech's just gone straight in for the Tech 9 armor. Mind Freak want to get this one over and done with. I mean, 1,900 loss bonus, so take the save after this. But maybe they can get it done here. One flash. It's going to have to be a damn good flash. And Tux is outside of mid at the moment, so the flash will be going over the mid doors. And Ricky doesn't spot anything on his way in with that Tech 9. Test up. Can maybe find some damage at range here. Gump as well with the Deagle. Ooh, running for his life. Pain tucked away in the cutout, looking to inflict some damage to any rooster individuals making their way through Kit Shell. Gambling that Mind Freak don't have a Molly to force him out of this position. He'll hear the wrap up elbow. Just trying to isolate these fights and play with the C team member. And it's looking pretty good him and TJ. Playing 1-2, peekaboo, Ricky, 2-tap, with Jell, and 
Kane as well, gonna be able to activate in through CT a little bit later, but he's gonna be left all on his own. Can't pick up the M4, 10 bullets, but barely shoots another. As three is found by Rooster, and the CT side looks like where both teams are gonna find more success at the moment. Yeah, still not quite gonna be enough to get us excited about this map yet, but it's definitely a better start to the half. Like we're going to have to take a save here, so this is where Rooster can cross the T's, dot the I's, make sure they start to get things rolling economically as well. I'm losing a couple of guns here and there. What if Rooster hit him with the, that's all they get? Yeah, maybe. Oh, not bad. Down out, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Just the block, so not very threatening, really. And that's that, 4 to 12. But this is now where things start to get a bit more interesting. Yeah, what do we do from this position? 12 to 4. Roost up. Nice solid rounds with good numbers alive for the last couple. So you can see the economy in a decent way. So they can afford to lose a couple of guns up against Mind Freak's gun round. Middoor smoke lined up, text up. Jumping for info, but that has cost him his life. Great timing on the peak from Chell. Mid doors does not bloom as intended. Gets a little bit silly sometimes, and that might be breaking Mind Freak's uh, chance of closing this round. 3v5. Yeah. Definitely a better look from Rooster on the CT side. You have to wonder how this map might have played out had they got the CT start. Nice pop flash. Yeah, Tuck's not really going to be able to make too much use of it outside of taking some mid control and just gets the timing wrong. Started to look away as ASAP swung. But, I mean, Mind Freak haven't really looked that threatening on the T side so far. Rooster are certainly looking a lot more solid and comfortable on CT. Mm. Chell with the AWP in hand. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but I am seeing the way that it could. Okay. Contacting through CT first. Gump actually coming back. So they might end up walking into this weird B setup. Danger on Scaff. In here, I don't think there's a world where they clear under window, but the Molly's going to force Chell out of that little pocket. And they haven't drawn any rotations just yet. So it is going to be a 2v2 over the A side of things. Last flash going to be used. Molly on site. That makes this way to Goose instead. TJ able just to bounce around here at ramp. And Slimy chimes in for the final kill. Five on the board for Rooster. Much better looking stuff. Yeah. If nothing else, it starts to build a bit of confidence for map two. And Mirage is a map traditionally for, for, for Rooster that is quite a stronghold. They don't often lose on the map. It's a bit more of a wishy-washy one for Mind Freak, it has to be said. Lost to DX8. Only a couple of weeks ago on it. But you can tell Mind Freak want to get this one done, right? Like, it's, it's not getting out of hand, necessarily. But it's like, well, this map could have been over five minutes ago. Rather than sort of letting Rooster have the run of things a little bit, building some momentum back up. But it ain't done yet. Rooster ain't done yet. Cool. Investment freak though. Mm. Ooh, Molly has not gone the intended way. TJ going for the jump throw. Yeah. You can really hear it now as well, can't you? I think you could always hear it. It was just... Apparently you could always hear it, yeah, but... I feel like I never noticed it when I was casting a game. But just then, I heard it twice. Like, yeah. from the T-Smoke and from the CT... Huh. Was it the Molly? Yeah. Yeah, and I, don't, I, I swear I didn't hear it before. But maybe it's just like confirmation bias, you know? Because people are talking about it now. You're like, oh, I can hear it. Yeah. I can just, we can just go back, look at a couple of old streams. See if it was there when 
anyone was throwing utility, but that being said, conversation for another time. These pistols are looking to get a little trade on long shell in the corner. Not quite spotted. Paint. What are they going for here? Smoke towards Ooh. kit, allowing them to retrieve that weapon. M4 in hand for Tux. And he's probably going to send that over to Tex. Oh, no, Tex is actually the mid player, so Tux has armor. He's going to keep a hold of it for the moment, even though he's only on 35 points of health. One smoke remaining for Ricky. That's going across the top. Shell. Ooh, spots. Some more info. And that smoke has not hit the right position. Did that hit? I don't know if that hit Chell or not, but... It sounded like it hit something. I heard a headshot sound. Did you hear a headshot it sound? It must have hit Chell. And then I was so... looking at Chell's HP, and I was like, he hasn't been headshot, but... Oh, yeah, 97. Okay. Yeah. He's been headshot by the smoke, I think. Headshot by the Tech smoke. <laughs> Gets himself a double yeah. with the Tech 9. I wonder if there's still a world in here. Tux, if he takes a head off. Oh. Yeah, well, bomb's gone now and five seconds to go. So, round's over. But another expensive enough round. That was an interesting, interesting uh, situation. Lots of sounds to think about now, isn't there? Jump throw sound and then now we're talking about the headshot sound for the mm -hmm. smoke. And if you spend... Pay too much attention to it. You can forget about how to aim. So some players just... Land players especially generally play better with just a bit of sound off or sound low. And they're the ones that don't hear the footsteps. So you rely on little plebs like me to be like, Oh, you heard him over there. Is that a thing? Yeah. Some, like if you listen to too much, you actually will focus less on other things. You know what I mean? Like, Right. Unless you're like in the flow state, but then if you're in the flow state, you might not be a communicator, which is why, you know, top level professional players have sometimes communication problems, but they might be the sharpest in the team. You can only do so much, Jordan. You're telling me people actively choose to play with sound low that they don't hear footsteps. Well, it, it's less that. It's just not sound loud, you know? Oh. Okay. Like, big picks. We'll yeah, shelf that conversation I, I, I for the moment. what you're saying. Yeah. TJ, timing may actually win the round for them if he gets this double kill on the A-site members if they rotate backwards, which mm. they may be, they might not be. Bomb's going to be planted at B in the meanwhile. It's still not going to save the round, even if he does, right? Because you'll still have to retake 3v3 on B, including we'll rotating across. More of a chance. Definitely. Mr. 1, Mr. 2 on idiot wall is not expected. Ricky bringing this back to a 2 4 Three members still trying to make their way over towards B. That is the game. Mind Freak get that 13th eventually. And we'll take map one of the series. Yeah, 13 to 6. It's maybe not as clean as a 13 1 would have been. But either way, I think you're going to be taking that one every day of the week if you're Mind Freak. Um, pretty dominant display, really, has to be said. Uh, especially that first half was, was super, super clean from them. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know that I'm. Yep. Um, yeah, I could see that. And then, like, Inferno has a bit of orange on it. And I think that would be, it like, does. the other map that, that those kinds of teams would play, wouldn't it? So, I can get behind the orange map pool fallacy or bias or whatever you want to call it. Because, arguably, other than Ancient, the, the puggiest parts of all the orange maps are, you know, the, the orange maps. It does right. too. Mirage and Anubis is becoming pretty puggy these days. It's True. more structured than what you'd probably think from Ancient. But, either way, it's Mirage time and it's Rooster's chance to hit back. Yeah, let's see if they can do that. Mindfreak looking pretty hot today, but this is definitely a much more favorable map on paper for Rooster. Got a couple of smokes here as well as a Molotov to set themselves up for an A take. There will be three players to defend. Texter might be about to get smoked off. We'll see if he decides to go through it. Somebody needs to help Ooh. Tux out, and it's not going to happen. Tux will go down, though. He got a lot of damage out. That's a nice shot from Ricky. Hasn't been able to double down until just now, and Texter's chiming in there with one as well. It's already... Looking pretty good for Mind Freak on map two. Bombs in an odd spot, but should be retrievable. Those smokes probably have no time left on them. They'll fade. Now the bomb is out on an island. I don't know if Tex has seen it. He's just playing towards the bottom of Con. But it will be spotted by Pain as he makes his way in from a main. All the way to Apex. Yeah, they know the bomb's there for sure. Although it has been retrieved. Chill. Pain won't stop the bomb from going down, and now it's slimy versus four. Tough ask, that's for sure. Yeah, he's not going to be able to get it done. So, pistol round. 
Locked in for Mind Freak. And the going continues to be pretty tough for Rooster. We'll see what they opt to do here with that extra cash that they get themselves. They've got that bomb plant down. And the way that Rooster have been going today, I can imagine they're going to try and get up to some funny business with it. What's the call? There we go. Investment, of course. Galil's across the board. Sami down to a tech nine. Not a huge smattering of util for Rooster. New window smoke? Nope. Short smoke. Looking like they want a fight window, so good flash coming through from Slimy here. Can set the raffles up for a nice big texter out in the open, not where you want to be against these Galils. And that's exactly what they wanted. Yeah, indeed. Let's see if there's some re-aggression here from Mind Freak into mid. Tux is floating around at the ladder room. You've got pain sitting in con but neither player getting too eager to take a fight don't half mind the position that ricky's found himself in but it's all a case of timing and he has spotted them out in team spawn he himself was also spotted so he'll have to be a little bit aware of danger as he makes his way back into the site potentially stuck between a rock and a hard place though has managed to creep his way back under balcony But no information being given away right now by Rooster. They're not making any noise. They haven't sped up at all. So Ricky isn't super confident in calling for that rotation to come across. Gump is pushing it out of B, though. And he's not seeing anything. So that is starting to give that little bit of a doubt in the mind of Mind Freak that they're going to start to pull extra members across to A. And it will be pain. We'll get the first little inkling of information. Ricky's just got to watch the balcony right here. In the end, actually decides to take his timing and does well with it. Good coverage from Payne onto the balcony in the end. And Mind Freak get away with that second round. It was looking a bit scary for a moment, but they lock it in. Yeah, you'll take that for sure. Nice patience from Ricky to activate for a couple. Danger did push and take him out eventually from Pal, but look, the damage was already done at that point, and Mike Freak's positions allowed for coverage on multiple fronts. Now, into the third, Rooster, you've got Danger with the Deagle, looking to just try and get a pick over towards A, but the action is here at mid, and Payne has the range with the M4. Plenty of time just to, okay, get that reload off, swing for more, Tux takes the third member at top mid, and Slimy with a Glock in a 1v5 is looking for anything. One kill is a win in this situation. A bit of damage would be a win, honestly. Yeah. So, 3-0. Mind Freak starting off Mirage the way they would have liked. Uh, job's going to get a little bit more difficult now that Rooster are back into the Buyer's Club. They'll have AKs across the board. Couple of MP9s here for Mind Freak, so we'll see if they get up to some funny business with those. Gump has definitely not been shy of a push here and there with the MP9. And I suspect we might be getting that into the apartments. It is Texter and Gump together. Might just work out. TJP going to go down early, barely even fired a bullet. I don't even think he did. Great start to the round for Mind Freak. Slimy. Won't dodge the molly. ASAP won't either. But pushes in, gets the pick. Dink for dink. AK comes out on top. Zap going to dodge a little more damage from that utility incendiary. And top con smoke will slow things down. 4v4. And Rooster looking for another opening towards that. Ooh, Tux has thrown a nice little palace smoke from Market. So blocking. And looking to fight over towards the stairs ASAP low. With that headshot line. Maybe he can get some more damage done. Tux waiting for across the top. But the HE is going to polish him off. And they've seen that util thrown from Slimy. So they know someone is hanging around con here. But it's all down to when Danger activates today, man. It's a very awkward spot for Tux to be in. You can see he's kind of got to watch multiple angles. 
but similarly, not really a position that you're going to expect to see T to be sitting in right here. So it's really a case of timing here for Tux. He's creeping his way forward. He doesn't look behind him. Yes, he does. No way. Tux has gotten away with it. Danger should surely get the trade, but damage already done. One on two for Danger now. The Molotov's going to sink his toes. Give Ricky the info. A little bit scary there if Ricky goes down, but end of the day, locked in. Four and zero. Mind Freak. Off to a belter. Into the fifth. And Roost up. Still struggling to get that first round on the board. Even just to get some damage. Look at that. Chell on three ADR. Salami on eight. Barely allowed to play the game. And TJ not too far away either. And uh, with the minimal kills. Four rounds, six kills for the total of Rooster. That means Mind Freak's economy is looking pretty bloody good. Gump still on 8.2k. Not finding too much action as that B-site anchor, but it looks like he might be in for some right now. Yeah, good damage out of the nades. Takes us there to assist as well. And in fact, it's actually more Gump that's doing the assisting than Texter. Texter's just fragging and... Honestly, Mind Freak, they don't really care. It's all semantics at that point, but that's a round with five guns alive. And that is five to zero now for Mind Freak, and starting to get the feeling that maybe Dust 2 was not the anomaly that we thought it was, and in fact, that's actually just how this game's going to be going. <gasps> Alright, TJ. Instant window. Are we playing on an old patch, or is he just a gamer? Maybe it is still old patch, but got that one done. Looking for mid control. Double flashes across the top. ASAP clearing everything out. And one freak were playing the setup towards a main. Pain left solo on a nice line that he can fall off of. Slummy. Listening out for all those sounds, all that information. And we will see the bomb start to make its way back towards A also. So TJ looking to call the A split, but there is four individuals they have to get past. Smokes in for top con. Uh, Ricky's hanging around. He wants to fight. The flash is a good one. Trying to ASAP. In the end. Oh, the damage is being done by pain more so than anybody else. Gump wants to re-aggress and does a good job of it. Sets Texta up nicely. Oh, it's just all gone wrong for Rooster. And continues to. It's a tough day at the office. Yeah. I really liked how it was looking until pain entered the fray and just started to hit everything with the orc. The split up con was working, but Mind Freak, of course, expecting it. Text to get his job done. Just stopping the split. And Chell's going to be able to find one under Tux, but that's the info they were looking for. And with 10 seconds, there is no chance that he's planting. So killing him after that timer hits zero. is looking to be the call to order. Mind Freak, have some guns, have some money to throw away here. Counter Flash forward. Oh, timing, positioning. Works out for Chell the first, swinging. Oh, gets another texter, unable to finish him off. End of the day. Six and zero. Don't think Mind Freak really care too much. These rounds keep stacking up. Shell's very scary with the AWP in hand, but... It doesn't really feel like Rooster as a team are kind of scary at the moment. The only way that they're winning rounds is if somebody... You know, like if Chell gets a 3k right now. Yeah. But everything else is just not working. It's really relying on the individuals. And honestly, Payne's having a great, great time on that CT side with the AWP as well. So no reason to expect that he's not going to be up to the challenge. See how he goes. Mind Freak, do you like to play in con? Something that Rusa might be prepared for if they continue to do it, but Payne will change his position up. Ricky's always got some 
unorthodox angles. Here's another one. Cool. Nice shot. Pain. Going back for more. Balls on the man. Missed opportunity for the second. Nade. Not going to get the job done. Pain falls and maybe there's a world where something goes right for Rooster, but I don't even get to say that. Nope. Don't get excited, Mac. You should know better. I like getting excited, Jordan. Alright. Well, let's get excited about this round. Got mid smoke, frogging, incendiary towards the top boxes, and. The CT is even going to break that one open to try and get some damage done. Pain. Hoping he can find something there through the con smoke, but inevitably, no one takes any damage. Three players going to swing unders and mid. Interesting setup. Tuck's falling eventually. And Rooster finally with an opening. Let's see if they can convert this. Might not be the easiest thing to hang on to when there's two orps in play. Gump may well be tested here. That transition over towards B is looking quite likely indeed. Oh, wow. What a shot from ASAP. Texan making the mistake of tapping through the smoke. Now Gump under pressure. Oh, he almost answered it well. Got that 5-7 out for one shot. Couldn't get his numbers though. So now it's on to Payne. And Ricky to try to retake the site. It's a tough one, 4v2, but Payne's already pretty deep in behind that smoke. Better choice might be just to save the AWP though. Money's not bad for the CT side, but there's still some legs in this half. Yeah, the value of this weapon can be carried across. And look, 7 to 1, that's not the worst scoreline. Bit of extra damage for the finances, Roost up. Losing one stick of the round loss bonus. And without too much in the bank, only three alive. It's it's a start. But they need to find a very healthy round at some point to try to get back into the half and maybe even break Mind Freak's economy. Instant tag time out from Mind Freak. So they want to knock this on the head before it gets out of hand. Just give Rooster the, the classic one and done. Maybe having a bit of a debate as to whether or not to bring the double orb in again. I don't imagine it will be the case. Money was there for it, but don't really get the sense that Gump was having uh, as much of an impact with that second orb as he needed to to really justify the purchase. Sure, they'll take it if they can pick up Chell's orb, but yeah. they're going to invest into it. No aggression out mid this time for Mind Freak. Not yet. Holding a bit of that util. Oh. Faster approach up short. Pain ready. Heard those miss. steps coming towards him. But off the back of that contact, there's a lot of util now dumped towards mid. Mind Freak still eyes on that area. But Ricky has spotted the workout from these T's. Interesting positions already. Danger up, Molly and Triple. They must have seen Ricky here. He hangs around a tech star. And the T's are just waiting for Splash to pop. Swinging, Ricky connecting for the double. Slimy on the trade game, but it might be too little too late. A whole minute on the clock for them to play with. And Chell on 2 HP could still maybe activate, maybe get a crack and shot off somewhere. But all these lines lost down. Great patience, great shots, and a huge round out of Mind Freak for eight. Yeah, awesome stuff. They're looking super clean, aren't they? Great coverage. It seems like they're pretty well drilled. They're well coordinated. They're communicating well. They've got each other's backs. 
cohesion is definitely there for Mind Freak tonight. And look, I mean, there's no no doubt that this is a bit of an off day for Rooster, but how many off days do you need to see in the last sort of month or two to start to wonder, is it more of a prevailing trend than anything else, actually? Mm. You know, how, how big of a loss actually was Netic? We thought, yeah, this team's still going to be good, but... Uh, honestly, it's looking pretty rough at the moment for Rooster. That's not to take away from what Mind Freak are putting together either, by the way. It's a fantastic first half from Payne and from the rest of Mind Freak, but Payne and Texter are the ones leading from the front. Do we know if Slimy got picked up by Rooster? Or if he got removed from Mind Freak for one of the individuals that are there right now? I don't know 100%, but from my understanding, I think it was the latter that Mind Freak made the choice to get Texture and Ricky, and then Slimy so happened to find his way into Rooster around the same time. Right, okay. Chell's been spotted out, trying to crab walk his way out of the smoke starting to get a little bit dire by the looks of things now for roosters they're just relying on the raw firepower tjp burning alive at the hands of pain's molotov and pain's going to keep having a bit of a look with that 5-7 texa meanwhile locking down the ct spawn turns away from the flash nicely yeah and gets another one. texa is just he's looking back. as sharp as ever he's good i'm loving yeah. this I mean, he always was good, wasn't he? Like this is yeah, this is exactly the, not good. This is exactly the kind of text that you could watch today's match and you could watch a game from five years ago, and it's like, yep, same guy. See, if we're talking about general mentalities of the team and like the vibe factor, I feel like it. 90% of the time might be better on the Mind Freak front. Oh, yeah. I mean, at the moment, no doubt. Yeah, of course. Of course, right, right now. But just in general, it might be a bit different when they're losing, but you've got a lot of mature individuals on that team that have been around the top level of the scene for a while. This round... Not looking like it's maturing too well for Rooster again. The Util going to be tossed around. Chell. Molly Smoke. Needs to try and get some kind of con split going. Smoke goes down. No one able to spot him from short, but it's just the factor of getting out of con now. Things getting a little awkward. Danger. Draws attention over towards the top of balcony, but they still are aware of Ricky's position over towards a main. They need to deal with him to try and get this bomb down safely. And it's TJ in that 1v3, finding the first one to Gump. Payne and Ricky to get past. Molly keeps Ricky at bay. It looks like they are happy. Ooh, Whoa. Just to play this slowly. Payne <laughs> catching TJ up on the top of default. Knew he had to find a fight somewhere. Yeah. But he can't win it this time. I mean, that's wild from TJ. But I guess you're, you're at that point where you're like, well, we're down 9 and 1. I have to try and do something. You know, just got to throw a spanner in and see what happens. Didn't work out this time, and it, it's like the map's going the same way that the first one did. Like, 10 and 1 again. Can you believe it? I certainly cannot. But this is where we find ourselves, and... Rusa... As I was saying in that first map, they've really got to find a way to lock in, like, sooner rather than later, because it's, it's not just this Atlanta qualifier, it's not just Challenger, where that's obviously a qualifier for Pro League, it's... Like, the RMR qualifiers are, like, literally next week. Yeah. The thing about the RMR qualifiers as well is they are also best of ones. The seeding's all over the place. Yep. And you could see these two teams playing in the first round, maybe. <laughs> yep. Uh, Actually, wait. Good. Are Rooster already through to close qual? I think uh, right. Rooster are through to the... Yeah, I believe Rooster are invited to the close qual. Okay. But, like... You know, uh, what I'm saying is, like, the RMR is coming soon. 
you know, you're, you're starting to miss out on a very good chance at going to Atlanta and to Pro League with ESL Challenger not going well. So, like, what, what actually are you going to be going to then as Rooster? Which is, I think most people would have considered probably the second best team in ANZ behind FlyQuest for, for quite a while. But, oh, hold that. Ricky, might be getting back into the round. Oh, if you got that double, it was on, like, Donkey Kong. Yep. But uh, we got a fast flank coming. Payne's actually going in with the 5.7. Here's oh, that, that util popping. Might be able to catch a beautiful timing. Ooh, oh, eyes on the prize. Danger, heads up to read the flank. with 30 on the clock. Wait. We're going to run into Gump. Oh, whoa. Ah, whoa. That's not the bomb. Chelios wants to trade with 20 on the clock. Goes for the <laughs> swing instead of going for B. That was ballsy, wasn't it? That certainly was. Gump's obviously booked it, but... Quick rotate across. Oh. Here's the tap. Yeah. It's going to be out window. Not quickly enough. TJP watching it. 10 at 12 at the half. So, back into the second half, and things are looking, dare I say, marginally better for Rusa than they were <laughs> on map one. It's not a very pretty picture to be painting, but it is true. Yeah, now they've got to get it done on the CT side. not a very big margin. <laughs> no, it's not. But they have more room to breathe than before, and if they get a pistol, then maybe they can crack their way back in. But yeah, that T side has not treated them nicely. Oh, what do we see from Mind Freak here? Full A split setup. Oh, rooster ready. It's a good question. They have to be. Chill. Trying to get a bit of info. 
but it's going to cost him his life. And so now it's on to Slimy. ASAP. Oh, can't oh. quite find the headshot onto Ricky, who can't quite find the jump into mid. But Texter's there to help him out. And they're both going to go together. Oh. Texter, sharp <laughs> as nails. 15 and 6 will continue his positive streak. And uh, we'll continue mind free swinging ways by the looks of things as well. Ain't that something, huh? 2v5. Kit's still in play on Slimy, who's had a rough day at the office, but a nice pistol could maybe get the blood boiling. Danger just waiting that smoke out at the top of Con before making his move, but it's a double jungle setup he's got to get past. And then beautiful post plants as well. Smoke going to be dropped on the bomb. Oh, and he's going to get locked down eventually. No tap just yet. Looking for a few more picks, but Gump finds him. Making his way out of the smoke, and that is going to be 11 on the board for Mind Freak, taking every pistol this series so far. Yeah, uh... I don't know if you know that, but I think that that's correct. So I was just rolling it back in my head. Pretty yeah, sure I'm. I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, it's been. Look, I, they've only lost eight rounds, so you're probably on the money. MP9 is going to be the force buy for Rooster. They know that they've just got to try to get something done, so they will invest. But at the moment. Mind Freak are booking their ticket into that upper racket final, and it's off the back of Texas Rifle in this second half. Ooh. Yeah, I yeah, wouldn't be sticking around there if I'm Tux. Got a bit of damage done, but maybe we'll follow through on to Tux. Sap gonna be chasing him, we'll find him eventually. That's gonna be bombed down at the top of mid, which is good info, but danger has now been heard. You can see Texas flicking his head around over towards CT. The AK Ooh. loses to the MP9. Which is a twelve thousand or twelve hundred and fifty dollar weapon, and Gump has spotted danger going over towards CT. Won't even throw the fake flash. Is just going to make his way up. Con. Yeah, he is him as well. It? Gump's heard it. Danger did not hear it. There you go. Gump was shift walking in Con, but he definitely heard danger on his way over to B. So he's got all the time in the world. He might even go. He's doing the rap. Is he? Oh, I thought he was doing the rap. Yeah, I wanted to see it. Nice safe position that he's chosen. 1v1, 12 on the board for Mind Freak, and Danger is making a world of noise, won't fully clear a main. Gump's already won. Yeah, well done. 12 to 2, a little bit uh, more tense than Mind Freak would have liked it to have been, but they won't repeat what happened in map 1, where they won that second half pistol, then lost the next round. They don't really give Rusa that extra chance back in. Of course, uh, Rusa will continue to invest as much as they can. But it's a pretty shabby looking buy. A smoke. Two smoke, three smoke. Simon's going to go back to the Deagle just to get a little bit more util. Got Ricky going for the insta window after a tactical. And of course, Rooster. There is only one option, and that is forcing in two Famuses, three Famuses, MP9, and a Deagle. A little bit of util, only really on Slimy. Let's see what they're going to be able to cook here in the 15th. And the problem is, you've got four players with just Kevlar, no helmet. And Jordan, I'm seeing two MAC-10s, which could punish them for that. Yep. Not a bad shout from Mind Freak. Smokes over into mid. Window and aggression smoke. A little bit of a mishap with the molly, but otherwise, Mind Freak not too perturbed by that because the brunt of their force is over towards B, and Texas found another entry. This is crazy, Mind Freak. Uh, decimating Rooster. ASAP, fully oh. white. Actually gets that kill on the tux. Keeps it alive for a second, perhaps longer. Pain finding Chell and then ASAP. And it is looking like the death throws for Rooster. They are going to be going down to the lower bracket of the Atlanta qualifier. TJP and Slimy to try and stave that off. Pushing their way out. Post plants. Flash from short. Bomb planted for them. Two men here, and that is all she wrote. 13 to 2, 2 to 0. Mind Freak, pure dominance on the orange map pool. Yes.
Indeed. Um, not much to really say about that one, uh, unfortunately for Rooster. And I... I'm a bit speechless, to be quite honest with you, Mac, because I was kind of hoping I was really building 